I made a video about what I eat in a day, and boy, did some of you take exception every step of the way. WTF? I had an eating disorder that had a healthier profile than this. Doctor, you should not drink coffee on an empty stomach. Okay, well, you can say that, but there's no evidence behind that. Coffee on an empty stomach is perfectly okay. Yes, I know coffee's a diuretic. Yes, I know it's a stimulant. It's really important for the mental health of the first few hours of my day though. <laughs> and I've been doing that since I was 15 and so far so good. Coffee is a known endocrine disruptor and metabolism killer. Why would you start with coffee? Just curious. Doesn't it blow your adrenals? There's a really good question built in here. So let's just begin with the first part. Coffee, an endocrine disruptor. No. Um, is it a metabolism killer? No. It actually stimulates the metabolism. It increases heart rate. It increases your blood pressure a little bit. It's a diuretic, but not that big of one. It's a, it does make your brain go a little faster, and that's what I depend on these days, uh, especially first thing in the morning. So the other part of that is, doesn't it blow your adrenals? No. When people are asking me about adrenals and caffeine, usually what they're trying to get at is adrenal fatigue. Are you gonna burn out your adrenals? That's what they're asking. And the real baseline issue there is what's happening during their sleep. The caffeine isn't affecting anything in my sleep, especially first thing in the morning. And if you really wanna burn out your adrenals, sleep four hours a night and live a very high stress life. That's how you blow out adrenals. Okay, so once we got past the coffee, the next thing the comments showed was, oh, they were worried about what I was eating. <laughs> this one says, Lord have mercy, where are the veggies? How, where do you get your vitamins and minerals from? Okay, I do a lot of work with guts that are healthy and not healthy, and here's the good news. Your GI system, your gut, will adapt to so many different varieties of a diet, and we have thousands and thousands of years of our survival to prove that. So in a diet, like a ketogenic diet, that's very low in fiber, that's very low in vegetables, my gut is doing an excellent job of absorbing the nutrients that comes along that food bolus very efficiently. And although the first few weeks that I went without this high fiber that I had been on for many years, my system took a bit to get used to, it is now very comfortable. No gas, no bowel problems, no bloating, and my body adapted. When I look at the nutrient deficiency in my vegans or in people who've had high fiber in the setting of a very inflamed body, they were a dime a dozen. They were everywhere in my practice. On a ketogenic diet, the more powerful outcome is because they are very efficient. and It will pull that nutrient from the bolus of food and put it to proper use without a lot of supplements, without hardly any supplements because of the quality of their food and the health of their gut. I contend also that when most of the problems I see in a gut that's not doing well is that their slime layer, that gut biome, has, has really just been destroyed. And although I've tried high fiber in my clinic for 20 years and didn't get nearly as far and as many people better, as removing the carbohydrates, which decreases the insulin, and the inflammatory process gets much less. And that starts to support a much better mucus layer inside their gut. So say goodbye to the veggies and don't look back. The transition can be a little rough, but life on the other side is wonderful. Keto breath is horrible enough by itself. I can't imagine what it is with sardines. Okay, so let's start with keto breath. When people first go onto a ketogenic diet, it does change, uh, well, the saliva and the ketones set up a different um, chemistry set in your mouth. And that transition can really change your breath. In the transition from a standard American diet to a ketogenic diet, there can be a very metallic taste or a very strange smell to the breath, that's usually a sign of high ketones. The improved makeup of the different bacteria that grow in the saliva of a ketogenic patient versus someone who is not ketogenic, well, the ketogenic patient has a healthier set of bacteria in their mouth and far less plaques, far less tooth decay. But 
yeah, sardines do not smell well, so I'm not sure if I'm going to win this one. <laughs> okay, boy, I know you must brush your teeth after a can of sardines while at work. <laughs> yeah, so honestly, when I eat them at work, well, now that I live in Florida, I will take the can of sardines outside. I will open the can of sardines outside, and then I will eat it on my walk. And then you're right, when you come back, uh, throw the can away before you get home. Again, sardines are the worst in smell, but nutrient dense and very ketogenic. Have you checked your heavy metals and arsenic levels after eating so many sardines? No. As much as you hear me talk about sardines, I don't eat them every day. <laughs> I try to eat at least a can a week, and that is not anywhere close to enough to be a problem. There are times where I'll do a challenge, like three days of only sardines. But, I mean, they're sardines. They're not that good. I like to use sardines really in a pinch, like when I know I'm about to be tempted, when I'm trying to stay the course or correct another bad habit that's shown back up in my life. I have cans stored everywhere. Even my workmates say she has a can of sardines everywhere, in my desk, in my purse, in my glove box. And it's because when in a pinch, it's a way better plan than the processed food or the standard food that gets offered to me that sometimes is tempting. Let, let me circle back to the arsenic thing. Yes, that little fish has a measurable level of arsenic, but you would have to eat so many sardines to make a measurable difference in a large mammal, <laughs> like, like me, like you. I guarantee this is way overblown, the arsenic, the, the heavy metal problem. Little fish, little problems. Bigger fish, then we can start to talk some real science, but I am not worried about you overdosing on arsenic while eating sardines. Okay, sardines are high in oxalates. What about gout? What kind of doctor are you? Please show your credentials. <laughs> Well, you can look up on the websites. I am a licensed internal medicine physician in Florida, in Texas, and in New York. If you wanna look up where I graduated, I graduated from the University of South Dakota where I spent the first nearly 50 years of my life. But let's talk about the real point of this question, which is what about gout? If you do a Google search for gout, you'll see that yes, high protein or high purines are a risk by eating small oily fish like sardines, you're decreasing your blood sugar, you're decreasing the processed food, and you're decreasing the insulin, all of which will make a far greater impact on improving gout or reducing the uric acid in your body as opposed to eating cans of sardines. All right, so the coffee and the, the common questions are, are playful, but some of these comments are, are really serious. All right, so one lady says, sounds miserable. So you're basically starving yourself. No, I'm not. I think that's one of the hardest concepts to educate people on is volume of food. Well, it has been a place of starvation for many patients over the last 20 years. And when they eat this low volume of food, their metabolism's shutting down, their brain is shutting down, and they feel terrible. But in a ketogenic state, once we have them fat adapted, that flexibility of opening up fat cells, allowing that stored energy in the form of fat to empty. The hunger is, is very low, as long as you keep the chemistry straight. So what, just a coffee and two tins of sardines? And then a similar one says, two tins of sardines, a coffee, not even a thousand calories, eating disorder disguised as keto. So this plays right into that Aren't you hungry? This sounds miserable. I am not starving myself. I really am promoting a state of chemistry in my body that suppresses the appetite. The conversation around eating disorder is very serious. And what we're talking about on this channel, well, we talk about mental health. We talk about how brains heal. And although a ketogenic state is known to be very beneficial for depression, for mood, for sadness, and even for eating disorders, that's not what we're talking about. When I have only two cans of sardines in a day and a cup of coffee, well, first of all, that's not what I do every day. But when I'm really trying to push ketones and increase that ketogenic state, I'm doing it to promote the opening of the fat cells, those places in my body <laughs> that have been storing energy for far too long. And the presence of high ketones are very likely to happen when I suppress calories 
by just having black coffee, not coffee plus cream, plus some MCT, plus some butter, just black coffee. And when I do have hunger, I eat something that is very nutritious, bite for bite, sardines are at the top of the list for a nutrient dense food. And it promotes the chemistry set that keeps my fat cells open, or in most cases, reopens those fat cells to get a higher delivery of my stored energy back in circulation and not stored in my derriere. This is so sad. I hope she gets the help she needs. She is obviously struggling with an eating disorder. Wow, this was so disturbing to read. Like, first of all, I care for a lot of people with real eating disorders. I love food. I do not have an eating disorder. My history of eating too much um, could be considered an eating disorder. But what we really promote on this channel is how powerful the choices in your food predict your body's chemistry. And it's through that perpetual flexibility of your metabolism that you visit a strong ketogenic state and then a less strong one. And then you hit another strong ketogenic state and then a less one. That cycle, that's how we reverse medical problems. These chronic medical problems fill the halls of my clinic and have for 20 years. Eating disorders were one of those and this is not making that worse. This is really repairing the chronic illnesses found in the body. I thought this was satire at first because she's a doctor. <laughs> so yeah, they, they didn't believe that I would recommend this. <laughs> so I love it. I love that you comment and give me your feedback. But if you wanna see a video of an actual day in the life of what I eat, check out this next video. I'll see you there.